Three and a half years is a lot of time for change to happen, and in the last three and a half years, a lot did happen in the world of Geometry Dash. In that time, we obviously got the revolutionary change that was 2.2, but we also got smaller, good quality of life things, like the fact that the community just became a more fun and welcoming place overall. But you may be wondering, why am I using three and a half years as a point of reference. Well, three and a half years ago, I made this video right here, the current state of Geometry Dash, in parentheses, why I almost quit. To this day, this is my only real proper video essay type video, and I'm still super proud of it, so I thought it would be really cool just to react to it, look back on it, see what changed in the community, and also give some critique to myself, because there are certain parts of this video that didn't age well, and were also just not good when the video came out. I really tried to make this video as good as possible, and it also got the attention of a lot of big names in Geometry Dash, and it was such a cool time for me just seeing all these people that I looked up to for years commenting on my video. But there were some points of criticism by them, specifically by A on Air, which I will get into later, but for now, let's just get straight into this. I almost quit Geometry Dash, and this is why. I got a new camera, microphone, and light, and I don't know if it's really helping me out too much, just showing like every imperfection on my face. But, I mean, that's how you know it's good. <laughs> uh, okay, so this is a pretty atypical intro, for a Geometry Dash video, right? I, I just treated this as like a very casual video, even though like I knew that this was probably gonna be the video that like really put me to the next level. I think I still wanted to just like incorporate like the quirky nature of myself in this video, but if I were to go back and change the intro, I absolutely would just to make it a little bit more formal. Like there's a time and a place for the quirkiness and I just don't think this video was that place, but whatever. So let's not waste any time and get straight into topic number one. Can we talk about that song transition? Can we talk about that? That was so good! Okay, I'm just gonna summarize the background for the people who didn't watch my original video. I still recommend you watch it, I don't think it's like super outdated. But basically, JF, my favorite creator, quit Geometry Dash and he gave a plethora of reasons for why he did it. And I talk about many of the reasons in this video. About the GD community, the topic of whether it's good or not comes up a lot. There's typically three types of people. One, people who say it's horrible and everyone within it is toxic. Two, people who say it's good and you just need to find the right people to associate with, and three, people who have seen the good and the bad but choose to stay neutral. I was part of the second camp for the first year or so of me playing, until I saw the community's true colors. So obviously I'm insinuating here that I'm in the camp of people who have seen the good and bad but choose to stay neutral, but honestly, if I were to like really think about my position today, I think I would align more with the second, people who say it's good and you just need to find the right people to associate with, because obviously there's good and bad in every single community, especially in the past few years, I feel like I've really interacted with a lot of really amazing people in this game. I just think at this point, I just hadn't really interacted with too many people outside of Twitter. Twitter is a very, very toxic place just naturally, so obviously when the GD community went to Twitter, it's obviously not going to be like the greatest experience. But even on Twitter, you can find some really incredible people to interact with, and the community for me really enhances this game. A lot of my favorite times in this game were on YouTube, making videos, seeing people comment on my stuff and give me opinions on my videos, streaming, people interacting with me in the chat, and obviously our common thing, the reason everyone's together at that moment is because of Geometry Dash. Sure, it's an extremely fun game and I would be playing it regardless because of how much I love the game, but I just think the community and the interaction just made it that much better for me. I just watched this video about the history of Geometry Dash and I wouldn't even recommend to watch it, I don't think it's a good video because he does a very poor job of covering its history. But in the video, he makes the point that the only reason Geometry Dash was as popular as it was during this time even though there were no updates, was because of the community and people making interesting levels and videos and stuff like that. Without the community, this game would be nothing. And I get into this point a little bit later in the video, so I don't want to spoil too much, but JF makes the recommendation to completely distance yourself from the community, and I don't agree with that, like, at all anymore. I definitely understood my perspective, especially at the time. There were some really creepy, weird things happening on Twitter um, in relation to Geometry Dash, so I get it, but I think generally, the community was on an upwards trajectory for a while in terms of, you know, being accepting generally. It's a good thing to be welcoming, but horrible people should absolutely not be a part of a community consisting of mostly minors. 
That's such a good point. And this video was actually made before the whole Guitar Hero Styles Ad V Out thing, so I think this part of the video aged extremely well because he is still so active in the community, he still gets millions of views all the time, and he did terrible, terrible things. But the question is, is this a GD specific issue? Because I don't think it is. There's so many terrible people in pop culture who still have extremely successful careers despite doing the most despicable stuff, but I don't think there's really an answer to the question of how we could really exile those types of people without just like, you know, doing the normal like cancel culture type stuff like we did with Avi out. It's obviously super disappointing seeing the number one person on YouTube for this game being a terrible person, but you know, there's so many greater people under him that I guess it doesn't really matter. It's not like he's the only person making GD content or is like the spokesperson for the game or anything like that. And Robtop obviously condemns him for his actions, shown by the fact that his rated levels got moved to this account called the Shadow Realm, which is pretty much where Robtop puts any levels by terrible people. <laughs> pretty much if you do something bad, Rob doesn't think you deserve creator points. And I think that's so cool. But I think this is more of a life issue rather than a GD specific issue, especially on Twitter. My timeline gets flooded with drama and people complaining about how bad the community is. Again, I think this was just like a life thing. I do think it was a little more prevalent in Geometry Dash, but I think that's present in pretty much every community out there. People are generally going to focus on the negative stuff because it gets more clicks, it gets more attention. People want engagement and drama gives that. Fuels the toxicity. Instead... Toxicity? Toxicity. Toxicity? What was I saying? <laughs> if the community is so bad, why are you in it in the first place? That's an- I feel like that's another moral dilemma, you know? Like, that's not a GD thing. It's like, do you spend the time to make your situation better, or do you just, like, completely remove yourself from the situation? You could also think of it in terms of a relationship. Are you going to spend the time to make things better with this person, or are you going to break up with them and move on with your life and do your own thing? For me and a lot of other people, we love Geometry Dash, so we're gonna do whatever we can to make the community a better place and make it work. But I guess people like JF valued other things in his life more than this game that he wasn't willing to kind of put his foot in and really like try to make things better. But then there's also the risk that you could be putting all this time and effort into making the community better by like hosting events and stuff and it just like doesn't. It may not come off this way, but I think at the time when I was making this video, I thought a lot of these problems were specific to Geometry Dash, but Looking back, they definitely are not. Stop fueling the hate and let's bring Geometry Dash back to what it used to be, a place of positivity and having fun. My point of reference here was 2017-2018 when I was having so much fun interacting with the community, um, getting people's opinions on my levels, uh, giving my opinions on other people's levels, uh, making videos on every play. I feel like not everybody had the same experience as me because there were a lot of people who were like, subject to a lot of bullying because of just the culture of the internet at the time with like the whole like edge lord and meme lord type content so i think generalizing this way is probably not the best idea but as i said i'm really speaking from my personal experience in this video and i wasn't really trying to like I guess I was trying to speak for some other people because i'm really trying to say like we need to get back to how it used to be but at the same time now i recognize that what was the glory period for me was not the glory period for everyone. But I think it's clear by this video that my passion for this game was sky high and I really wanted to do whatever I could to make the community a better place and that's totally why I made this video. But I think a lot of the issues that happened with the community were just because of the way that internet culture was at the time. Whether we like to admit it or not, Geometry Dash is not nearly as popular or as stable as it used to be. Okay. I think that was the most controversial statement of this entire video. I'll never forget this comment from Aeon Air where he pretty much just says like, you're wrong, right now GD is more popular than ever, and he was totally right. So the way I got my statistics for that statement was by um, searching through Google Analytics and how much people were searching Geometry Dash. But I didn't really know of like any other metric to go by like in terms of like figuring out how popular GD was at the time. People were searching for Geometry Dash a lot less than they were in like 2017 or 2018. That coupled with the fact that everyone on Twitter was saying GD is dying, GD is falling apart. Um, 
I said that pretty confidently. So if we take a look at Steam charts here, the peak that I'm really referring to was about here, 9,000, right? If we go to the point where I made the video, which was about here, it was still 7,000, which is a lot more than I thought it was at the time. I think I made a pretty good response to him where I stated how like Steam analytics probably also may not be the best thing because it's not counting people playing on like Android and Apple devices. But I think generally Steam analytics is probably a pretty good metric. This is just a very frustrating time in GD where it was like we we weren't getting anything from Robtop, so I think a lot of people in the community were probably like pretty agitated. So maybe that could have been why people had that perspective. But he's been giving sneak peeks for the next update and promising that it will come quote unquote soon. On the yeah, it, th that was so frustrating. And today, even though he is like pretty good with giving the community updates, I really wish they were more like structured i guess but if he thinks making players wait more than a year for an update that generally is riddled with bugs and is severely unfinished is a good idea to keep this game going then he's got a lot of work to do as a game developer see the thing is robtop didn't really have an incentive to release 2.2 because in the time between 2.11 and 2.2 the community was so alive. Like, everybody was still playing this game, there was not really many dips as we saw on Steam charts, so he didn't need to release 2.2, it just wasn't, like, a priority for him, probably. I think JF was definitely wrong here. The community is more alive than ever, and really peaked even before the 2.2 announcement happened. Like, if you go to July of 2023 on, uh, Steam charts, like, that was- it was so high. Obviously, it's frustrating as a player of the game to not be getting any updates, but if we're talking about like the overall well-being and the success of the game, him updating it really had no influence on that whatsoever. He should put his ego aside and accept others' help. I'm just thankful for people- That's a point. Have we confirmed whether Robtop has accepted help from other people? Like, I think Viperin helped a little bit with like the help screens and stuff in the editor. Um, so I guess technically he did accept some help from the community, which is so cool. But that was a bold statement I made there. I went kind of crazy with that one. <laughs> Viprin and Noise, who are actively trying to keep this game alive by hosting fun and engaging events. Whoa, wait, did I predict Viprin helping like with the help menus? The creator with 100 creator points will most likely get the level at least star rated, while the creator with zero creator points would most likely not get any CP from it, even okay, if Robtop- Okay, right, right, right. So this is an ancient point. People have been making this point for many, many years, and Robtop has got so much better at this that I think today, like, he's rating stuff that's, like, not even rate-worthy. It's really hard to find a medium. It's really hard to find a place where, like, people are satisfied with what Robtop rates and how he rates it. A lot of the points in this video, I feel like, don't really have a solution, and I think, like, my purpose of making this video was to hopefully, like, gain a solution from it, but I think a lot of these are just, like, interesting points that I think are just, like, general issues within this game that probably will never be resolved. Okay, so let's talk about, like, the whole, like, four creator point, now five creator point thing with Mythic. I've been very vocal from before even I made this video that Epic should have been more valuable. Epic should have been what mythic and or, or what is it called a legendary is today like it, it should just be super super valuable thing that is only awarded like once like once in a blue moon this is the golden buzzer like if your level is awarded this like you're gold but i think after 2.1 came out rob top was a bit too frequent with how often he awarded levels to epic that he had to make things like legendary now it is so easy to grind creator points that it just completely devalues like all the levels that came before if you think about it in 1.9 the highest rating possible was a feature and there's some incredible levels in 1.9 that i think are even better than a lot of the things that are getting rated mythic today the algorithm would rather recommend a GD meme compilation from 2016 or outdated tutorials rather than a well-constructed video that someone took months to make, and it's pretty frustrating. Oh, okay, so again, I'm, it's, it's on a similar thing. This is not a case of YouTube handpicking these really low-quality videos. This is a case of people more likely wanting to watch these lower-quality, less intense videos. If you look at all the popular shorts and all the popular videos, Within the past two years, they're all like these super low quality, terribly made videos. Not to throw Kai Guy under the bus again, but a lot of his shorts are so terrible, but people are watching them. And that's the reason that 
they're boosted in the algorithm. It's not because YouTube is going out of their way to boost his videos in particular. It's because his videos are the ones that people are watching the most. They're more appealing to a general audience and a younger audience. And I think today a lot of GD has a younger audience. Over the past few years, GD's younger audience has increased exponentially. I think now the main player base of this game is like under 10 years old. I could be wrong about that, but that's really what it feels like right now. Yes, it totally sucks for people who are making like these super high quality videos and just aren't getting that many views. But blame people's attention spans. People want to watch these super short 5 to 10 second videos that are just like nothing vapid garbage. Not to throw someone else under the bus here, but there's a reason why Drake's music is so popular. It's because a lot of it is so generally appealing and so easily consumable. A lot of these issues I'm presenting are just societal issues rather than just issues within the community itself. But TikTok's algorithm is superior in almost every single way. I still agree with this point, by the way. I think TikTok's algorithm surpasses YouTube's tenfold. But I think the difference between TikTok and YouTube is that like, I'm not making much like super short hyper content when on TikTok, I was. I was making a lot of like, you know, under 30 second videos that were super engaging. That was the reason why to this day, like I am so much more popular on TikTok than any other social media. It's attention spans. That, that's all it is. It's just the way that people consume content today. On YouTube, I've seen the same videos on the homepage repeatedly, and you seriously have to grind to get even 100 subscribers, at least from my experience. Okay, that's true. That's so true. YouTube would recommend like the same few garbage Geometry Dash videos that I would never want to watch. <laughs> YouTube's algorithm has been complained about endlessly, and they still have not made any improvements, so I think it's safe to say that nothing is going to change anytime soon. I think things did change. I think the algorithm got a little bit better at recommending videos. I no longer really see the same video twice anymore, and I know that was like a big issue at this time, so I think things did change in that way. A solution to this problem would be a large creator or group of large creators making a platform for smaller creators to grow. I still think that is such a fantastic idea and I really wish that some bigger creators would do that, kind of create a network to help smaller GD creators grow. Hopefully I do get to the point one day where I will have enough uh, subscribers to be able to do something like this where I can kind of create like a routine, like maybe like a shout out collaboration video type thing where I can like shine a spotlight on a lot of, you know, smaller creators. If you're a bigger GD YouTuber watching this, please take my idea. Just take it and do it. Run with it, please. But yeah, that's pretty much it for this video. I think at this point, there are no severe glaring issues in this game like I was presenting in this video. I think this video was an extremely interesting and important piece of commentary. I think without even realizing it, I really broke down like the moral issues in Geometry Dash that we're not exclusive to the game, but we're just moral issues generally. It's really interesting comparing the GD community today to back then, because even though I do think it's very different, we're still the same community. A lot of the people on top are still the same people on top. It's just really cool to see how our community changed after the course of an update and just time in general. This is probably going to be my last video for a while where I really, you know, take a look back on Geometry Dash or just really anything as a whole because um, I'm at the point in my life where I really just want to like look forward and keep creating. I do love doing that where I kind of just like take a look back on everything I've done. So I probably will from time to time make a video like this, but I think for now I'm going to try my best to just, you know, keep the train going. I hope you enjoyed and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.